Hi, welcome to Sylvie's Technique Vlog. What I'm going to be showing here is something that both Karahat and Sagat worked with me on and really emphasized, but Sagat was like really hardcore about it and his version is like way more visible. So it's a difference in the tie kick or the round kick or whatever you want to call it, but basically the way I've been doing it is very wide and they both say that it's way too slow. So I was doing it where you come out and kind of over, you like create this kind of like rainbow kick. The way that both Sagat and Karahat do it, Sagat especially, is the kick comes up, like almost straight, and then it turns at the very last second. It's incredibly hard to see, it's really fast, and what's really cool about it is that it accelerates at the end. So it comes up and over, so you have to use your standing leg to really create that second part of the move but you want it to come up like you don't want to can can it but your hip is going to be coming forward first so you really have to control your arms for the balance so what was really interesting about learning this technique was that i trained with sagat at the beginning of the week and then like five days later i trained with karahat they could not be more different fighters from each other and they both emphasize this kick. So I kind of thought that maybe it's like a golden age type kick and I've been kind of wanting to look into it and see how many of the other tra other fighters from that era have this type of kick. Because it's not like people are learning the wrong kick. People always think there's only one technique for something but there are multiple techniques for every move in Muay Thai and they're not wrong and they're not right they're in context, so you have to understand the context for things. What was really hard about this one was that it's so different from the kick that everyone learns that figuring out how to make your kick come up straight without doing the like hand pan, like I call it the Ferran kick where you end up like hitting people's elbows, it's hard to get it to come up and whip in to accelerate on the very end of the kick because it's a really hard kick. When Sagat was throwing it at me, it was terrifying and the few times that I got it right on the bag for him I could feel that it was right but I couldn't break down the elements of what made it right so something that Sagat says all the time is how feel because you have to be able to feel when a technique is correct and the way you feel that a technique is correct is you feel the power or you feel the speed or you feel like the invisibility of it Sagat's style explains why he uses this kick. He's all about this super economy of movement and total power. So you have this like frame around your body and you don't want to break out of that frame. So he was really emphasizing you don't want any kind of bend in your punches. Everything comes straight out of your ribs. You do that with your kick too. If you look at the kick that everybody learns, if you have this like frame around you, and you kick like this, you're busting out of your frame, like, immediately, and all your power comes from this explosive off of the block, and by the time you reach your target, you've actually decelerated, so all your power is at the front of the kick, and then it slows down by the time you hit your target. The way he does it, you don't break out of your frame, you're coming here, so it's this economy of movement, and then it accelerates on the end, as it hits your target. It's like the bullet getting faster right before it hits. It's pretty cool. So it's a little bit difficult because you have to engage your hip coming forward rather than your hip turning. People are always like, turn your hip on your kick. So instead of emphasizing the turn at the start of the kick, you emphasize the turn at the end of the kick. So it comes up and over. So doing it on a bag helps because your leg has to come along the side of your opponent, right? So your target is here. If you look at a regular kick, here's the side. A regular kick, even if you're stepping over, watch how much of the space is wasted before you hit the target. It's like all this wide area that has nothing to do with what you're trying to do. It's the same as if when you're trying to throw a punch, you like came all the way around like this. It's a lot of wasted space. So you want to think about your foot kind of traveling up the side of your opponent first, and then it just turns at the last second. So 
you still need to step outside of your opponent, but don't break your own frame. So bring your entire frame over with it. It's faster, and you can feel that little pop at the end, and it feels like this, like, yeah, <laughs> like you're hitting your opponent. What's important about that last little twist is that you come up and then over. So you're not going to be kicking up into someone's elbow. That's when you turn in. So if you look at like the standard block like this, it would kind of be landing right in here. But because you're coming up the leg first, if they block, you're inside the leg already. Like you already got your like crowbar in the door before they locked it basically. So I did this with Karahat at the end of the week and he was really working with me on it as well because he hates how wide my kick is. He's like, I can see it from so far away because all the power is this way. So it's like, it's like this super wind up before kicking. And as I started to make it more straight, I started slipping in to his block and his block is so fast, but I was just getting just inside the door. It's like jamming your foot in the door so it doesn't close all the way. Up the side, up the side, and then over. That one was a little wide. So you want to try it on both sides. I've been doing everything south paw, so it's actually better on my left side than my right side. But it's the same thing. You just need to bring your entire frame over. So you don't want to go so wide. It's like up and in. And when you feel it, you feel it. You might need to like film yourself or watch yourself a little bit to like see whether it's coming up straight. Because a couple of times when I was training with them, I'm like, it's totally coming straight. <laughs> it was not. <laughs> so before, before you know how to feel it, find a way to see it, have your friend look or like look in the mirror or like film it or something. But when you start to feel it and you start understanding those mechanics in your body as you're coming up, oh, you will use this kick, it's good. <laughs>